Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the AE2 Inscriber, how to automate it, and just basically everything about this block. Now, this block can be very can be very confusing when you first start out playing this game, but after you get everything automated, it will just save you in the long run so much so if we look at how to craft it come over and you need two sticky pistons five iron ingots and a pure fluix crystal the pure fluix crystal i will talk about this block in a later tutorial but you can use crystal growth accelerators with a formation plane and a transfer node with put water in the middle and just drop the seed in the middle and you'll get your pure fluid fluix crystals but other than that I don't need to make that one so let's go ahead and walk up here so what you need from this is the FTB infinity evolved if you do not have that mod pack what you need is AE2 and the other mod down here, if you so wish, was extra utilities. But you can do without extra utilities, it's just a little harder to do. So, after you have everything plugged in, we have ME dense cables running all over the place. I know it seems kind of confusing, but for our normal inscriber logic presses or any press in general you want your ME interface on the right hand side and import bus on the left so the import bus is going to be importing what you have on the ME interface so one printed logic circuit is made with one gold ingot and the way you can tell that is just put the logic press in there with acceleration cards and the gold ingot will go right there and automatically be made. But you may be asking yourself, wait, this doesn't have any power. Well, behind the machine or underneath it, if you so choose to spread all of these out, I have these all set up behind the machine and then it's just connected with a ME glass cable. So that way none of the any smart cables that are connected to any of those interfere. But your ME interface, you just want to put that blank pattern in with whatever is made on the printed stuff. So for instance, the calculation press is made with a pure Certus Quartz crystal. So the pure Certus Quartz crystal will go here and it'll automatically go out there and be import bus back into the system. The import bus goes in, the export bus comes out. So you're gonna want, if you're making the printed stuff, a ME interface and an import bus on either side, it really doesn't matter. But you need it on the middle, one of the middle two sides to go in this middle slot here. If we are going to make a processor, this is where it gets a little complicated. So you're going to want the ME interface on the top block, a import bus on the right hand side, and two export buses, one on the bottom and one on the left. Now those you c cannot mix up because what will happen here is the redstone comes in from the export bus. All of these have acceleration cards in them. But the redstone comes in from the export bus on the side. The printed silicon, which we just made from over here, comes in on the bottom side. And then if we were to go make an engineering processor down the system. So let's go ahead and craft 10. 
we were to make 10 and hover it over this, you will notice that these automatically get placed and then it just grabs the printed engineering processor from over here, circuit rather, from over here and turns it into a processor. And then it will automatically import it back over there. That's what the import bus is for. It will take the processor, put it in the import bus, and then run it all the way back down to our system. And you just repeat the process of that to every one of these that you want to make. So I have four of these running, two logic processors, a calculation, and an engineering. But other than that, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And have fun, guys.